The visually dazzling performances at air shows are practically begging to be filmed. But these beautiful jets move fast, and they're pretty far away. Surely all the footage you're seeing right now was shot on a high-end camera with an expensive long lens, right? You already clicked on this video. You know what I'm gonna say. It was actually shot on this. Most people don't believe me when I tell them, and it makes sense. It doesn't seem possible. Cell phones are notoriously bad at capturing anything far away, and the compression they do to keep file sizes down shouldn't be able to produce cinematic results. But if you haven't been paying attention to iPhone cameras in recent years, they have made huge leaps. In fact, Apple has started shooting their own product launches with them. In this video, I'll explain how I'm pushing the iPhone's camera system to its absolute limit, and I'm gonna show you how to shoot air shows and any fast-paced event like a pro using the best camera in the world, the one that you've always got with you. But to do that, first, let's go somewhere a little quieter. iPhones have been getting better and better at shooting video over the years, but the key enablers to shooting stunning airshow footage came in last year's iPhone 15 Pro line. Those are a USB-C port, ProRes log recording, and the new 5X telephoto 120 mm equivalent lens in the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You can do everything I'm about to show you with a regular iPhone 15 Pro as well, but I highly recommend the Max model. The regular Pro only has a 3X telephoto lens, and the nearly double optical zoom on the 5X lens in the Pro Max will come in very handy here. Rumor has it that the longer lens is coming to both the Pro Max and Pro models in the upcoming iPhone 16 line. Even if that happens, I still think the bigger screen on the Max will make it easier to see what you're filming, but if you don't want a big phone, I get it. You can also do some of what I'm going to show you with an iPhone 13 or 14 series Pro or Pro Max, as they feature ProRes Rec. 709 recording, but the lack of USB-C means you'll need one of the large capacity models with a lot of available free space. The lack of log encoding on these models will also lead to a less professional look overall, but if you're just starting out and it's what you've got, why not see how far you can get with what you have? It's worth taking a minute to talk about ProRes log footage. ProRes is a broadcast quality video codec developed by Apple. Because it has a massively higher bitrate than the standard H.265 footage your phone usually shoots, it looks way sharper because it is less compressed and displays less artifacting as a result. Log is a special color profile used by a digital camera that captures far more dynamic range than typical video. Straight out of the camera, it looks flat and desaturated, like this. A color correction must be applied in post-production for it to look normal. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do this later in the video. Since the range of colors and luminance is so much higher, you have a lot more room to manipulate the footage after the fact, which will come in handy for airshow footage, which contrasts dark jets against the bright blue sky. By default, the iPhone 15 Pros can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second in ProRes Log directly to the phone's internal storage. And if that's all you've got, you can get started with just this phone. Most of what I'm about to cover you can do with just the phone. And if you're new to video production, that's how I'd recommend you start. But if you have some video experience or using just the phone on its own isn't enough for you anymore, and you're ready to go to the next level, you'll supercharge your shooting with a few key additions that are all unlocked with this. You see, the real power of this new phone is in its USB-C connector, which allows a host of accessories to be attached to make shooting easier. The first I'd recommend is a small SSD, like this T7 drive from Samsung. It's a one terabyte model, which is probably the minimum size you'll want to look at. An external SSD is basically a requirement if you plan to shoot footage in 4K ProRes log at 60 frames per second. The native iOS camera app won't even let you record 60 FPS 4K log without one, and while there are third-party apps that will let you, you will fill up your phone with footage quickly if you don't have an SSD. You can also hook up a shotgun microphone to capture the incredible sound these jets make. That's the stuff. 
I've been using this Rode VideoMic Go 2, which connects via USB-C and also has a line out for monitoring through headphones. To keep the phone and accessories powered, you'll need an external battery, like this Anchor Nano power bank. Now the iPhone only has one USB-C port, so to connect all this at the same time, you'll also need a USB-C hub like this one, called the Belkin Connect USB-C to four port USB-C hub. Links for everything I mentioned will be in the description below, by the way. All of this stuff is unwieldy, unless you can mount it together into an integrated unit. For this, I've been using the Moment Mobile Filmmaker Cage. You can use any cage you want, there are a million to choose from online, but I went with the Moment one since it connects via MagSafe, which means I won't have to buy a new cage whenever I upgrade my phone. It's also super easy to get the phone in and out of it. How you attach this all together is really up to you and your personal preference. I bought a few clips, like this one and this one, that can mount the hub, SSD, and battery to the cage. A few nice to have accessories are these side grips from Small Rig, which makes the whole thing way easier to hold, and this sunshade from Moondog Labs. When recording in log, it can be hard to make out exactly what you're filming in direct sunlight, and a sunshade can help reduce glare on the phone screen. If you go all in with the suggestions I've outlined here with all the bells and whistles, this rig will net you about $500. If you strip it down to just the essentials, it's about $350. And if you use cheaper alternatives or find items on sale, you can reduce that cost even further. Or omit items entirely if you already have them or don't need them. I bet you already have an external battery pack lying around somewhere. Don't need a microphone just yet? I didn't have one for the first few air shows I filmed. I just used the built-in mics on the iPhone. The beauty of this system is that it's modular. You can add or upgrade components of it as needed. Even the phone itself, if you're the type to upgrade regularly. And you'll be able to reuse all the accessories with future phones since it's all built on USB-C. Obviously, none of this is including the cost of the phone, but presumably you need and have one of those anyway. I don't need to tell you about how useful a smartphone is. This guide is about how you can enhance what you already own to shoot awesome footage. Once you've got your rig assembled, it's time to configure the app you'll be using to shoot the footage. The native iOS camera app can record ProRes log, but it comes with some pretty big limitations. The only two things I like about it is how simple it is to use and that you can smoothly zoom and transition between lenses if you need to go from a closer frame to a wider one in the course of a continuous shot. That ability and ease of use comes with some significant drawbacks. The primary one being you can only shoot in ProRes HQ, which is one of the highest quality versions of ProRes and leaves you with enormous and frankly unnecessary file sizes if all you're doing with the footage is sharing it online. Additionally, the manual controls of focus, exposure, and which lens you're using are extremely limited and out of your control. Because of that, for all my videos, I now use the Blackmagic Camera iOS app. It is completely free, which is insane given how much functionality is packed into it. Let me take you on a quick tour of the app settings that I've configured to make sure we capture those jets in the best quality. So here we are in the Blackmagic camera app. I'm gonna jump into the settings in the bottom right hand corner and make sure we have everything configured correctly. So under record, we wanna select our codec. I shoot everything in Apple ProRes 422LT, which is a smaller file size variant of Apple ProRes. HQ is really big. Um, your other options are HEVC and H.264. That's what your phone shoots natively, and those are probably gonna be too small for our use case. You're gonna see a lot of compression and artifacting. So Apple ProRes 422LT for me is the sweet spot. Resolution, we wanna set to 4K. I shoot everything in 4K. If you're really space conscious, you can go down to HD. One of the benefits of 4K uh, is you can always crop in to a 1080 image and not lose any overall quality. So you kinda of get like an effective longer zoom that way. Um, so that's always an option to you. If you can shoot 4K, if you have the space for it, I recommend it. Next, we're gonna go over to audio and we're gonna make sure our audio source is set correctly. So uh, I have the Rode VideoMic Go 2, which I've selected here. If you're just using the iPhone microphone, you can select that. 
but we're gonna make sure our external mic is selected. And audio format, I would recommend using linear PCM. It's probably the safest option. And we wanna make sure our record audio as is set to stereo. Next, we wanna go over to monitor and set up a few things here. I always definitely wanna select uh, display audio meters, make sure that's on. And we also wanna display storage status and battery indicator. Under the media section on the left, this one is important. We wanna make sure that we're saving our media to the correct location. So there's an option here for save clips to. Uh, by default, it's selected to go to in-app only, which basically records files inside the app and then you can share them outside. If you don't have an SSD and you're just recording on your iPhone, that's probably what you wanna do. There is this files option though that we wanna select if we have an SSD. So we hit the little arrow here and it brings up our file selector. In the top left, there's a little button that looks like a sidebar. You hit that and you can scroll and select your drive, assuming it's plugged in. So we select that. And you can select a specific folder on the drive if you'd like, or just send it to the root. Once you are where you wanna be, you hit open and now it says it's saving to that location. Now we're gonna go back out to uh, the camera tab in the top right. And this is our HUD, which is where we can see all the information about what we're going to be recording. One quick note about this actually, I've had this happen to me a couple times. Sometimes your HUD just disappears like this. And if you're wondering how to get it back, all you have to do is just swipe anywhere on the screen and it'll pop back up. It can happen accidentally all the time and it's, the first time it happened to me, I was very confused. <laughs> So in uh, the top left here is where we can select the lens that we want to use. So for air shows, we're almost always going to want to be using the 5x 120 millimeter option. You can switch over to the 1x or ultra wide for some maneuvers. If there's like a big bomb burst or something like that, you can switch over to that. But typically we're going to want the 5x lens. Frames per second up here right next to lens. I shoot everything in 60 just because high speed action typically looks better at a higher frame rate. It also does increase the file size. So if you are concerned about file size, you can bring that down to 30. It'll be a little more jittery, um, but you know, it, video has been 30 frames a second for a very long time and it's been fine. But 60 will give you a smoother experience. Shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and tint all up here at the top. These are settings that unless you know what you're doing when it comes to videography, I would just leave them alone. <laughs> the iPhone is gonna be better probably at selecting those things for you than, than you are, again, unless you know what you're doing. So I would just make sure that shutter speed is not locked uh, and that ISO and white balance and tint are all on auto. And they will all uh, adjust as you uh, tap anywhere on the screen. It'll auto adjust the exposure and the focus to wherever you tap. Over here on the right, we have a couple of options here. There's a little square in the top right, and this can control guides that come up over our footage that are not recorded, but allow us to uh, more easily see what we're doing and, and recording. The one I would recommend you turn on is this one here, which is the grid. So the grid brings up a rule of thirds grid to make it easier to frame stuff up. Um, and there's also this option here for a stabilization indicator. So it tells you when you're level. This next one over here, next one down is exposure. This is a huge one. Um, the auto exposure on the iPhone on the 5X lens is very hit or miss when it comes to filming air shows. If you're filming a darker set of jets like the Blue Angels, uh, it's it will work better. But when you're filming like the Thunderbirds or any like fleet jet where it's uh, painted gray, they're intentionally designed to be hard to see. So it can throw off the autofocus. So you wanna make sure you're setting manual focus wherever possible. Luckily for air shows, it's pretty simple to do this. You're gonna be probably anywhere from 0.78 to 0.85, somewhere in that range, you wanna turn off auto in the top right there. The easiest way to do it is just to look at something far away, tap, and it'll auto set the uh, focus to that specific point and then you just don't touch it. And usually when I'm filming, I will have the focus indicator up so I can always see that it's still correctly at about that distance. Next down here, we wanna set exposure. Again, I would select auto just because as you're whip panning across the sky, the light level can change dramatically. And if you have it set for one level and then you move over here, it's gonna look weird. So leave it on auto and it'll auto adjust for you. Again, unless you know what you're doing. This next setting down here under the record button on the right uh, is stabilization. I always select extreme. It's kind of equivalent to what you would get out of the stock iOS camera app. And then in the bottom right, this is pretty crucial. This is the, the audio meters. For some reason that I don't understand, when you have an external microphone attached, it will automatically default to audio gain of 100%, which is 
definitely not needed for how jet how loud the jets are. Basically, every time you plug in the uh, microphone, it jumps up to 100%. Always remember before you're shooting to check your levels down here, bring the audio gain all the way down to zero. Before you are ready to shoot, I recommend also turning on low power and airplane mode on your phone before filming. This will extend your battery life, kill all incoming notifications, and keep your phone from getting too hot in the direct sunlight of an air show. With your rig ready and your app configured, you're ready to go film some jets. Here are some tips to make your life easier at the show. First, always double check key settings before recording a demo. The big one I always double check is under settings, media, save clips too. Since you're likely going to be disconnecting and reconnecting your phone throughout the day to use it as, well, a phone, the recording location within the Blackmagic app can get reset. I also double check that I'm using my external microphone under settings, audio, audio source. On the viewfinder screen, I like to tap the audio meters in the bottom right hand corner to double check that the audio gain is turned to 0%. Have some lens, hand, and screen wipes with you, especially if you put on sunscreen. Your fingers can smudge both the camera lens and the screen more than you think, making your footage blurry or making it very difficult to see what you're filming. Before you arrive, do your research. Check out videos online of the team you'll be recording. I've got plenty of them on this channel. As long as it's from the last year or two, they hardly ever change up their routines. Get to know the show so you'll always be aware of where the action will be coming from in the sky. I recommend practicing throughout the day on the early flights like single jet demos and aerobatic performances to get the hang of the speed you'll need to move the camera. Also take note of landmarks that might get in your way or help you frame up a shot. All of this also helps you make sure your recording setup is configured correctly. It's a great idea to bring headphones so you can watch and listen back to some of your test footage early in the day to make any adjustments before a big act like the Blue Angels or Thunderbirds. As with anything, location is everything. Airshow performances use something called center point to coordinate their maneuvers. Directly in front of the crowd, there is often a big landmark, like a vehicle or buoy, if the show is over water, that is easily visible from the sky. Most of the action will happen above this point. You want to be as close to center point as you can be to get the best footage. But lastly, just keep filming and don't get discouraged. Even if you can't see exactly what you're getting or feel that you've missed something, odds are if you're pointed in the right direction, you'll get something usable. If you stop filming in frustration, you won't have anything to work with when it comes time to edit. Now, when it comes to post-production, that is a whole other can of worms that is a little bit outside of the scope of this video, which is focused on how to shoot incredible air show footage with an iPhone. The problem is that when you get the footage home, log footage looks gray and washed out like this. So you need to do something to it to get it looking good for editing. I'm gonna show you some super basic color correction steps right now to achieve that. And if you need more info on how post-production works, there will be links in the description below to other excellent YouTubers who have done tutorials on color grading and editing to take your video to the next level. If you'd like to see my specific workflow, leave a comment down below if you would like a follow-up video. We're going to use DaVinci Resolve to do this. It is an extremely powerful video editing suite made by the same company that makes the Blackmagic camera app. I swear they are not sponsoring this video, but if someone from Blackmagic is watching, I am available. Resolve is 100% free for the use case we are covering, but they offer a paid version as well that is easy to upgrade to if you find you need more features. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I'm in the edit page on the bottom here, and on the left, you're gonna see the media pool where I have a clip that has been brought in of the Blue Angels doing their Diamond 360 maneuver, and the footage is ProRes Log, so it is gray and ugly, and we're gonna change that. We're gonna to go to the empty space here in the media pool and right-click, go Timelines, Create new timeline, hit create, and we're gonna drag that clip into the timeline. And then we're gonna just park the playhead on a shot that we wanna change here. So you can scrub along there. And in the bottom right, we're gonna to go to this cog wheel and bring up the project settings where we're gonna select color management on the left. And we're gonna to go to color science and change that to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Automatic color management should be checked. SDR should be color processing mode and output color space should be SDR Rec 709. You don't have to know what that means. You just have to know that when I hit save, just watch what happens to the footage. Oh my God, it looks so much better. It, it looks great, but I think we can maybe tweak it a little bit more. I'm gonna go down here to the color tab 
And uh, this is very intimidating looking screen. Don't worry about it. Just focus on the bottom left here where you're going to see the primaries color wheels and the little circle here. And we're going to make some adjustments. Now, the cool thing about this is you could do this to regular iPhone footage. You could maybe make it look good, but it would be very highly distorted. But because we're working with log footage, we can push this really far and the footage won't deteriorate at all. That's the advantage of shooting in log. We have a lot of flexibility with what we can do to the image. So if I go to gamma here and grab this little wheelie guy below and drag to the right, I can bring up the uh, brightness almost like too much. And it's still, you know, it looks bad, but it, the image doesn't like fall apart when I do that. So I'm going to Bring it back down to something reasonable here, just to brighten it up a little bit. The lift controls the shadows, so I'm going to grab the little wheelie guy below and just pull those to the left to just bring them down a little bit to just increase contrast. And then gain over here controls the highlights. So I'm going to grab the wheelie guy and drag to the right just to bring up the highlights. That's pretty much going to be the sky and the uh, smoke trails here, just to create a nice vivid pop here. Like if you see, I, I could drag it even more and it doesn't, it only starts to fall apart at the very edges. <laughs> yeah, you can bring it all the way up to here and it still looks pretty good. You wouldn't get that in normal iPhone footage or any regular SDR footage. Only with log footage can you push it this hard. So we're gonna take it there and then below gain is uh, saturation here. Um, I'm just gonna bump it up again. You could go way too far to the right and that's you know too much or way too far to the left and it's black and white. So 50 is where it's set normally. We're gonna maybe put it at like 60 or so. That's looking a lot more vivid and punchy. Maybe a little bit too much, but I'm trying to illustrate a point here. So on your keyboard, you could do a quick shortcut. If you're on a Mac, it's Command D and if you're on a PC, it's Control D. Uh, we'll toggle on and off the corrections you've made so you can quickly see what you've done to the image and you can see that is looking much more vivid and it has not fallen apart despite all the work we've done to it it still looks pretty solid because it's got all that information in the log it's looking great i think we can take this footage and start editing with it content creation with professional grade tools in our pockets. I only started doing all this because of this iPhone. Could I get better results with dedicated professional tools? Of course, and I might one day, but I already have an iPhone and it's closing the gap with the high-end gear every single year. The best thing to do if you want to get into filming air shows or anything is to just begin with what you have. So come on out and join me on the crowd line. If you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button and check out one of the videos on your screen here. And special shout out to Connor at Circa Via for helping me film here on location at the El Centro Air Show. Check out his channel down below for some hilarious comedy goodness. Catch you next time when we explore more Aerospace Horizons.